Welcome to stage three of Desert Brutality 2019. On this stage, you start in a start box in the bay over here. Doesn't matter. You have a magazine of five either in your hand or on your belt, and then you run this way. All the way over here, please, to this fantastic little prop right here that we have made specifically for your pain and shooting disenfranchisement. So you get on here, load your rifle, and while this thing is probably doing this, you engage one clay target downrange. Once you break the clay target, then you shoot the steel, then you shoot the clay, then you shoot the steel, then you shoot the clay, then you shoot the steel, then you shoot the clay, then you shoot the steel. You keep doing this until all the clays are broken and you finish on the steel plate. You may notice you started with a magazine of five. You're gonna have to reload at some point on this fantastic prop. Once you've done all of that, you clear the rifle, sling it hopefully, and then we run over here to the other bay. Let's go. So we're running right now. I'm not, but we would be. Once you're over here, you climb up on this roof prop, pull out your pistol, chamber around, and while prone, meaning your belly has to be touching the roof prop, spin the spinner target. Everyone knows everyone loves the spinner target. All right, guys, so here at Desert Brutality 2019, STAC was another one of our division sponsors. They sponsored the armored division, which is appropriate because you guys make plate carriers. Yes. And you make other stuff too, right? Mm -hmm. What else do you make? Uh, so we're mostly known for our uh, Kiwi pouches. They have uh, Kydex inserts in them for great retention. We've, uh, it's actually been fun because last year there wasn't many people wearing our pouches. This mm -hmm. year there's lots of people. And yep. uh, I think we need to make a new rule for next year. Oh. Because I see lots of people losing mags all over the place in the stages. This is true. So I think next year we have to do, if you lose a mag on the stage and you don't go back and get it, no one can pick it up for you. So people start learning to there you go. get better. Yeah. No tactical yard sales. Yes. <laughs> and um, you also make modesty pouches? Yes. Yes, because someone, who won't name his name, has some stupid drill over here where you throw in a kettlebell. And uh, apparently my non-stretchy pants, when you go down and then kick your legs out, it uh, makes your zipper area a lot bigger and very open. You can start to drill yes. so hard you blew your pants out. Yes. That is awesome. And no pants, not made by s -Tech. No, uh, someone needs to learn to sew better, apparently. <laughs>
left to right. It's unload. All right, so this was our stage three. And once again, Brownells has conquered communism. Brownells has conquered communism. By the way, we're on a range with live fire and generators nearby, so don't say anything about the audio. It's the best we can do. Yeah. So, how'd it go? Awesome. Awesome. I really liked it. So. We have done a stage before with one of those unstable platforms. Yes, we have. But this is a different physical unstable platform. Yes. And it's less stable than the one we shot on last time. It is. And last time, what I found was recoil didn't really, with a 556, recoil really didn't move the platform. Right. On this thing, recoil moves that platform. So even your 556 gun was moving you when you fired? Yep. Okay. And there was enough distance transitioning between the clays and the steel you couldn't like keep your elbows and just pivot the gun. You had to like physically move, which really meant that every time you transitioned, you were wobbling that platform more. Pretty much you had to trap the target. Now with the 762 by 39, guess what? It moved even more. That it did. So when I brought the front side up, side up on that little clay, it was doing this thing. Yep. And exactly. it wasn't me, it was the platform doing this. So what you had to do was kind of trap the target. Yeah. This is an instance actually in which almost, this is so rare, this is an instance in which full auto would help. Oh, I think it would have, maybe. Especially something with light control burst on 5.56 five, where you go, maybe. Yeah. Now, if you miss it, you're going to have more recoil. Exactly. If, once you're done with that burst, then you're really swinging. But I think the Soviet doctrine of short control burst with the AK is general use would have made a difference on those orange blades. Maybe. Because the, it was literally going like this, like yeah. just through it. So if I could have gone, da, 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 I have a feeling that would have worked. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to get a full auto AK and try it. We'll never know. But I got through it, I was able to break them when the when the 762 by 39 hit it, they went away. Oh, that was funny, because when I hit them, most of the time you needed a spotter to be like, yeah, you put a little hole in it, yeah. and yours just went, bye bye So there's a difference of, you know, we're not actually testing barrier penetration in a match, but it is evidence of the power of the cartridge. Yeah. That said, we get off of that little thing over there, run over to that rooftop prop, and now you had the best of both worlds, yes. because the other side of this stage actually benefited a larger caliber, higher energy gun, such as Power 45 AC5, because it was spinner off the rooftop prop. Right. You spun that in one mag. Yes, five rounds. Well, five, five rounds? I had two rounds left in the mag. I'm pretty sure it was five. So I had two in the mag and one that went out when I cleared the gun. No, I spun it in one mag as well, but I had a high power with a lot more ammunition in it. Yeah. And I also figured out what was going on in stage two. This is a borrowed gun. The gun's shooting left. Ah. Okay. <laughs> when I had plates on there in a stable position to actually that top plate, I was hitting the top plate. Mm -hmm. But when I had to, when I was stable, I could actually aim at it. And when I fired, it was back to it. So then I used left edge of front sight. Problem solved. I wish I'd known that for stage two. 
is what it is. But we both won it. You did it much faster than I did. Yeah. So your time was? I was in this one at 95 seconds. Okay. And yours was 122. So we're about 30 seconds apart on this. However, I'm one penalty below you right. in terms of up ahead of you. So we're now 30 seconds apart. We're about 20 seconds apart now, totally. We're and finding this to be a consistent thing at these oh! reality matches where each stage is like, oh, we're 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. And then it all comes down to the last stage. I'm going to be winning up to stage eight, and that's when I explode catastrophically and lose the match by five minutes. Well, we'll see what happens. So <laughs> that's three of the four today. Stay tuned for stage four coming up soon, which will probably be the rain. Yeah, it's starting to rain.